On the Korean front, a combat infantryman fires a gun. This WAC inspected it back in the States. Tanks push ahead. They are fast and powerful. They were tested by this WAC. Wherever the army is stationed, women in uniform are there too, working with the soldiers and for them. They continue a tradition which began nearly 200 years ago with a woman called Molly Pitcher. She was the wife of an artillery man in the Revolutionary War and took his place at the gun when he was killed, saving it from falling into enemy hands. George Washington appointed Molly Pitcher a sergeant for her bravery and placed her on the list of half-pay officers for life. The same tradition was carried on in the Civil War by a woman named Clara Barton, who devoted herself to the care of the sick and wounded soldiers. She was a war nurse and later founded the International Red Cross. It was such pioneers as these who set the pattern for women in our army. America began to grow, and women were advancing too. World War I found them ready, ready to take man's place on the home front, ready to play a necessary role in defense. Women were at war, playing any role where there was a need. Aiding the sick, tending the wounded, Women were there on the battlefield, heroic nurses fighting not to kill, but to save. And when the war ended, women proudly marched with their men in the victory parade. In peace, they fought for a greater share of our government's responsibilities and won the privilege of voting. By achievement, they set new standards of endeavor, but their greatest test was yet to come. Pearl Harbor. Uncle Sam's men went to war again, and nurses went along with them. This was a different kind of world where strange-sounding names became datelines for death and heroism. Corregidor, Batan, Bougainville. Men were wounded, and nurses were still there in the field helping them. Many nurses won the Silver Star decoration. Others fell into Japanese hands, but were rescued and returned to duty again, for the need of them was great. began to drain America's manpower away from their deaths. Men were fighting, not manning typewriters. But the number of troop movements grew. It took a lot of paperwork to win a war. There were a lot of jobs for which men could not be spared. And six months after Pearl Harbor, the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps was born. The Army no longer stood alone. Pallas Athena, goddess of war and achievement, became the WAC insignia a symbol of American women dedicated to defense. Across the country, women answered the call. They fell in behind the recruiting parades in fur coats and business suits. Now they had a role to play, an important role, filling a lot of jobs. Soon, the fur coats would be gone. They would be in uniform, proud and patriotic women who lead the way. This was the WAC in 1942. After enlistment, things happened fast. Interviews, mental tests, and physical examinations. It was a shooting war, all right, in the arm. But after basic training, they were assigned to regular duty. Some returned to school. They had to be trained for specialized jobs, such as mail clerks, x-ray technicians, pharmacy assistants, meat inspectors, and jobs in radio. The WACs did many jobs. They helped get the troops to the combat zone 
and they made sure they got the best weapons. And before long, they themselves followed. By their first anniversary, the wax were 60,000 strong, serving at more than 100 military installations.